Do you want a flatter jade split? Then keep watching because today I'm going to share with you my top tips to help you take your jade split from here to here. When a student decides that a flat jade split is on their goal list, the first thing that usually comes to mind is to stretch more. Whilst this will help, there is one key secret ingredient that they are missing and that is to strengthen more. I see many students who have incredible oversplits on the floor but don't have the strength or active flexibility to do it aerially, aka up the pole. We're going to begin today on the floor where the magic happens and I'm going to take you through a series of exercises to help you strengthen your splits so that we can reach our flattest jade split up the pole. We're then going to go into the trick itself and we're going to go up the pole and I'm going to take you through my best tips and technique cues to help you reach your flattest jade, jade split. Ensure you warm up your front splits properly first by beginning with five to 10 minutes of cardio. Then you can join me on the floor for some conditioning. For this next sequence of exercises, you're gonna need access to a yoga block and a mini booty band. If you don't have access to these, don't stress, the exercises can be done without. But we're gonna begin first by placing the band to just above our knees, and we're gonna begin with glute bridges. So lying down on your back, you want to position your feet to where you can just reach them with your fingertips so that your ankles are positioned directly under your knees. From here, we've got to think about opening those knees into the booty band. So we never want them to cave in because your butt's not working. We've got to open the knees wide. Then from there, I'm going to focus on trying to scoop my hips, squeeze my booty at the top and lower back down. Now we're going to aim for 20 of these and then hold that last one up. So it's going to be a scoop squeeze, making sure my knees stay open, and then also making sure that I'm not arched through the lower back. I really want to try and tuck that tailbone around. So with this one, I want you to imagine that you're not directing your Wii forwards. We're going to try and tuck the tailbone around and direct that Wii upwards towards the roof, making sure that those knees stay open the entire time. I'm also keeping my shoulders down away from my ears and trying to focus this one through my booty. Now it's really important that we strengthen and warm up our booty because it's going to help those hip flexors open up and stretch a little bit deeper for you. And it's also responsible for pulling that back leg down when we're up in our jade split. So big exhale up, keeping those knees nice and wide. And again, your goal is to aim for 20 of these for two sets. Big scoop up, squeezing through the booty. Once you've completed your 20, you want to hold that final rep up for at least 30 seconds to a minute to really embrace that booty burn. For our second exercise in this sequence, we're going to do some clamshells. So laying on your side, you're going to keep your feet on the same line as your spine, making sure that that tummy muscle stays tucked in the entire time. You'll also notice this section of my waist isn't caved in. I'm lengthening nice and long, so I'm creating a small gap between the bottom side of my torso and the floor. So again, making sure that you're not crunched up. So you're really trying to stretch apart those ribs and hips. Your feet should also be on the same line as your spine. I'm going to press my heels into each other as I open the knee and then lower back down. So it should be an exhale, open, inhale, lower back down, really tucking in through that core. And then just imagining you've got a glass of wine sitting on top of your hip and you don't want it to fall off. So you're not allowed to rotate backwards. You got to keep that pelvis super steady, super still and hips stacked on top of each other. And your goal is to aim for 20 of these ones and big exhale as you open the knee, inhale as you lower back down and you're pressing those heels hard into each other. Once you've completed your set of 20, we're going to move on to the next exercise. Exercise number three in this sequence is going to be a 90 degree clamshell. So you're going to have your knees level with your hips, feet positioned directly under your knees. For this one, you're gonna keep those heels pressing into each other as you open the knee, just as we did in that previous exercise, and lower back down. Now, same uh, technique cues, make sure this bit doesn't cave in, you wanna lengthen long. Again, just imagining we have a glass of wine sitting on top of that hip, and you don't want it to fall backwards, we gotta keep those hips stacked. 
don't want to drink that glass of wine later so don't let it fall off now with this one literally make sure you're at a 90 degree bend at your hips and at your knees so my knees are up level with my hips i'm going to take a big exhale as that knee opens up inhale as it lowers back down and we're also going to aim for 20 of these ones and then make sure that we repeat both clamshells on the other side. For this next sequence of exercises, you're gonna need your yoga block and your mini booty band. So I'm gonna place the booty band on, feet through the loop again, but this time I'm gonna place it to just below my knees and keep the band positioned so it's between the floor and my knee, so it holds in place. And then I'm gonna flex my feet. I know it's not pretty, but it's gonna help you feel your butt better. As I kick through my heel, kick up to the roof, and lower back down. Now I'm trying to keep my foot position on top of my knee, not in too close or out too far away, directly on top of my knee for optimal glute activation. And I'm gonna kick up hard through my heel and then lower back down. Now it's important that we don't arch because that way I'm just using my lower back. Instead, we're gonna keep that tailbone slightly tucked under in a neutral position as I kick up. Again, holding that flat back and lower back down. So just making sure that we don't get any of this motion happening. Just keep it neutral, kick and lower back down. Now I'd like you to aim for 20 of these on that first leg. On number 20, we're gonna hold it up and you're gonna pulse that heel to the roof 10 times, just for that extra little booty burn. After those 10, you're gonna straighten your leg. We're gonna squeeze the booty, kick, lower back down, squeeze, kick, lower back down, just 10 times, making sure that we don't arch through that lower back. And then the last one you're gonna do on this side before you swap um, and repeat on the other side, you're just gonna grab a yoga block and you're gonna place it between your underbutt and your Achilles tendon. So again, my underbutt and Achilles tendon, and I'm gonna kick into the block as hard as I can as I kick up to the roof and lower back down. And this is just gonna focus on your hamstring a little bit more than your butt. Because so it's gonna, stronger hamstrings are gonna help keep that, that hamstring nice and safe when we open up into that jade split. For these ones, you're gonna aim for 10. Once you've completed your 10, making sure we're not arching through the back, we're keeping that neutral spine. You can repeat all those four on the other side. Now that your butt is nice and awake, we're gonna move on and do some conditioning for your hip flexors. For this one, just finding your pole or a wall that you can hold onto for some balance. And then we're gonna make sure that we're standing up nice and tall. Straighten one leg out nice and straight, making sure those quads are active. We're gonna squeeze, lift the leg as high as you can, and then return back down. Now, as I lift the leg, I make sure that I don't tuck through my tailbone, because that's gonna use my abs more so than my hip flexors. So standing up tall, keep that pelvis and spine neutral, lift with control, no momentum allowed. Squeeze and lower back down. And don't stress if your leg's not getting as high as mine. That's fine, just practice, it'll get easier. And just also making sure that you don't hoik one side up more than the other. Try and keep those hip bones level as we lift with control and then control on the lower back down. Now with these ones, you wanna aim for 10 each side. And then on number 10, I'm gonna be mean, you're gonna hold that leg up for at least 20 seconds and then lower back down. From there, we're gonna add one more onto this sequence. So we're gonna, from there, take our straight leg now out to the side on a 45 degree angle. So instead of dead forward like this, I'm gonna take my leg out on a 45 degree angle, lift with control, not hoik up through the side of my hip and not tuck the tailbone under. Again, you're gonna aim for 10 of these ones. Now it's really important, a lot of people do these ones like it's a side butt exercise, like they're trying to open to the side. It's not a side butt exercise, I'm still trying to focus on your hip flexor. So give your leg a little bit of external rotation so that knee is kind of pointing outwards or almost behind. And then you're gonna squeeze, lift, and lower back down. Don't rush these either, keep them slow. Holding that last one for about 10 to 20 seconds before repeating these two on the other side. Now you should be ready to stretch your splits. So for mine today, I'm gonna to start in a pyramid position and I'm gonna hinge forward at my hips. 
From here, taking my hands down to the floor. If you can't reach the floor, you can pop your hands up on some yoga blocks. I'm gonna bend forwards and then straighten my leg backwards. So just focusing on stretching out my hamstring first. And again, I'm gonna squeeze my leg nice and straight as I push my booty behind. And then you're just gonna hold. And we're gonna rock a different direction. I'm gonna flex my front foot, point my back toe. Rocking forwards and backwards, making sure that I'm keeping both legs super straight. And I'm really trying to think about rotating my booty up towards the roof. So no rounding allowed. Booty out. If you're rounded, pop your hands up onto some yoga blocks. Try not to look under towards your boobs either. When I do so, it just rounds my back. I try and think ribs up, looking straight ahead or head up. Then just holding this one back. So pulling those toes up towards your shin. Squeezing both knees nice and straight. Big breath in, big breath out to try and sink a little bit deeper. And just enjoying the stretch through that hamstring. Then from there, I'm gonna step forward into a long lunge position. I'm gonna tuck my back toes under and make sure that my hips are square, so they're both facing forwards. Now, it's important that I don't just let my back arch like so. Instead, I'm gonna try and tuck the tailbone under so that I'm targeting that hip flexor in my stretch. Keeping chest up tall, I'm gonna try and kick the heel behind and then lower back down. Again, kick the heel behind and lower back down. Really squeezing through the underbutt as much as I can. And I'm also trying not to go up and down. I'm trying to hold my depth as I kick and lower back down, keeping chest up nice and tall. And then after about 10, we're gonna hold, lock the knee nice and straight, keep that chest up nice and tall, and keep trying to tuck the tailbone under Pull the hip of that back leg around to face forward and keep that chest up nice and tall. So we're getting a really nice stretch through that hip flexor. After about 20 to 30 seconds, I'm gonna lower my knee down to the floor and enjoy a little bit more of a relaxing hip flexor stretch. Now it's not completely relaxed off though, I am squeezing my underbutt, engaging my pelvic floor to keep that tailbone tucked under and keep that chest up nice and tall. So it's a, it's a bit of a butt workout this one. Big breath in, big breath out to try and sink down a little bit deeper. And then you're just going to step back up to your pyramid shape position. Placing one hand down on the floor, so I've got the same arm down as front leg, and we're gonna open that arm up so that I'm rotating away from my front leg. Now, if this is a bit too hard with hand on the floor, you can place your hand up onto a yoga block, or if you're feeling pretty good, you can start to softly bend through that bottom elbow. Now, with the rotation, it's not just my arm going back behind. I'm really trying to rotate my torso and get that chest as open as I can. Again, big breath in, big breath out to try and sink that little bit deeper. Trying to get that nice big stretch down that hamstring. Keeping both knees active. And just taking a few deep breaths to help me sink as deep as I can. And then we're going to rotate and place my opposite hand down to front leg. Same thing, but this time I'm gonna to twist towards my leg. Again, you can place your hand up onto a yoga block, or if you want more, we can start to softly bend through the bottom elbow. Making sure we're squeezing both knees nice and straight. Big breath in, big breath out to try and sink nice and deep. And then really activating those quads. So my knees are squeezing nice and straight. And I'm making sure I'm not rounding through my back either. I'm really trying to think booty open or facing upwards towards the roof. 
and then big breath in, big breath out to try and get a little bit more rotation and sink a little bit deeper into the stretch. Then bringing both hands back down to the floor, I'm gonna step my back leg back behind and bring both hands to the inside of that front leg. From there, you can either kind of stay where you are, or if you can, I want you to step down onto your elbows. If you're close to your elbows, but not too far, you can rest your hands up on a yoga block. Otherwise, just lowering down to the floor. Just make sure that you don't look under towards your boobs because it rounds your back. With this one, you've always got to think about lengthening along. So I'm going to lift my chest up and try and keep my back as flat as possible. This one, I should be feeling the stretch a little bit more through my underbutt of that front leg. And again, keeping those ribs up nice and tall. And just imagine you've got a bit of string attached to the top of your head and we're just pulling it, trying to lengthen you long. Lengthen your spine away from that back foot. And just a few deep breaths to try and sink as deep as we can into this lizard lunge. And I usually try and aim to sit in each of these stretches for at least a minute. And you're always keeping ribs up. Don't look under. And then from there, I'm gonna come back up to my hands back up nice and tall and just push back into a half split position. Keeping both hips facing forward, I want you to squeeze the, that front leg as straight as you can so it's not allowed to be bent. We have to be nice and active through the quad. You're gonna hinge forward actively and then I'm gonna bring it back up nice and tall. Now just watch you're not rounding in this one. This one is should be nice and flat. Think of it like a bend and snap. So you're gonna hinge forward, sticking the booty out and then press that heel into the floor to come back up. And you should be getting a nice stretch through that hamstring. So fold, big exhale to bring it all the way back up to the top. Now I'm also trying to keep both hips facing forwards. So don't let this hip wing open, facing forwards. And I usually try and aim for at least 10 of these little deadlifts. And then on number 10, just hold. Really trying to stick the booty out, press that front heel down into the floor, squeezing that quad, and then bringing the hands to the floor, but don't lose that nice flat spine. So sticking the booty out, and as with all the other stretches, don't look under. As I look under, see how it rounded my butt? Head up, ribs up, as you poke that booty out. Big breath in, big breath out to try and sink as deep as you can. And then lifting back up. From here, I'm gonna try and lower down as low as I can into my split. Keeping chest up nice and tall. I'm squeezing my quad and I'm squeezing the underbutt of this back leg and trying to pull myself as square as I can. Then just repeating that whole sequence on the other side. Once those splits are feeling nice and warm, we're gonna bring it to some ponche kicks. So I'm gonna get you to bring it up to a pyramid shaped position, making sure we're flat, not rounded. I want booty out. From here, I'm gonna plant my right foot into the floor, take my left foot behind, keeping my leg straight. I'm gonna squeeze, lift that leg up as high as I can into my split, lower back down. So squeeze that booty and lower back down. So you wanna aim for at least 10 of these, I'm trying to stay as square as you can. On number 10, you're gonna hold that, that split and then you're gonna try and pulse backwards 10 times as far as you can into that split. Making sure you complete it on both sides. And then for your last exercise, we're gonna take that ponche to a wall or even to your pole. You're gonna shoot that leg up the wall or up the pole, and you're gonna try and squeeze your butt, kick, and then bring it back down. Kick, and then lower back down. So it should be quite a big butt workout. I should really help get that butt nice and active, ready for that jade split up the pole. Now with this ponche against the wall or the pole, you can make it easier by stepping your foot 
away if you don't quite have a front a flat split yet and just pulsing off the pole or the wall from there or you can also make it harder by having that foot away and forcing yourself into a more over splitted position but again aim for 10 of these and then just make sure you complete that exercise on both sides first tip for a flatter jade split is to get your setup correct first your setup is basically the building blocks for your jade split if it doesn't feel strong or something's not quite technically correct, the jade split is going to be very hard to flatten. Go to bed. So let's go up the pole and look at that setup position. So I'm going to enter through my outside leg hang. And I'm going to try and bring my right arm. So I'm on my right waist, left leg up the pole. So my right arm, which is the one against the pole, my inside arm, I'm going to create a little butt shelf. So my fingers are facing my toes. With this butt shelf, I think about turning my elbow in, which gives me a lot of grip behind my armpit. If I don't turn it in, I'm gonna lose a lot of grip. From here, I circle my right leg around, not too low, um, and then I'm gonna reach my hand on top, or quite low across my shin. The further down here it is, the harder it is to pull that leg across. So I grab the top of that shin and I pull that leg across my body. And that's going to give me a really strong thigh grip. From here, I make sure that I don't round my back. As I round my back, I actually lose a lot of potential to grip with my waist. I'm not going to be able to flatten this jade split as well. And I'm also losing all this grip behind my armpit. Instead, you want to think chest open and booty out while also pulling across and turning that elbow in. And then you want to maintain that booty sticking out. So you always want to think booty sticking down to the floor. Then if we're in the right spot, we should be able to remove that top leg into our pike position. Now, once that's set up strong, I'm then going to bend my back leg and I'm going to push those toes down to the floor, almost like a donkey kick. And as I straighten that leg out, I'm going to keep pushing those toes towards the floor and try and lower that back leg as much as I can. Now I'm really thinking booty squeeze to push that leg down. Once that leg's down as far as it can, I'm gonna yank that front leg towards my face. So I lower the back leg, then I yank that top leg towards my face. I really think chest open and pull that front leg across my body. So it's quite twisted. And then I'm gonna exit through inside leg hang. So a jade split itself isn't actually a square split. It's a very turned out open split. So you can actually get this split to look quite flat, even if your floor splits aren't overly flat. Let me show you a little funny angle from the floor. So laying on my back, I've got my right waist in the pole. I'm just gonna push up and bring my hips up the pole. Now from here, as I circle my leg around into that pike position, I grab quite high up my shin or further down the shin. And then from there, lowering that back leg down to the floor. Now, as I pull my leg across my body, you'll notice how it instantly looks a lot flatter. So it kind of unsquares my split. Hopefully you can see how my hips twist as I pull that leg across. So again, it's quite an unsquare split. So as I pull that leg around, grab the quite low down that shin, Release that back leg. I'm gonna lower the back leg down, pull that front leg across, and see how that twisting gives me a real flat split. So I pull it across, drop the back leg as far as I can, then yank that front leg down, and that gives me my nice flat jade split. And then just really making sure I squeeze, actively squeeze the booty of my back leg. If I don't squeeze the booty, that leg's not gonna drop. The leg's not gonna drop on its own, so squeeze your butt. Now, breathing is another thing that can really help you stretch a little bit deeper into your flexi positions on the pole. Just as you do when you're off the pole practicing your stretches, we'd usually exhale to sink a little bit deeper. Same thing when we're up the pole. A lot of people tend to stop breathing, which will actually tighten up your muscles. Instead, you wanna take that big breath in and then big exhale to try and stretch deeper into your position. And then also remembering it's very important to squeeze your butt, the butt of the back leg, because that butt is going to be responsible for taking that leg more into extension or deeper into that split. So let's have a look at that one more time. So coming up, 
outside leg hang. Butt shelf, leg circles around, not too low to start with. Pull across. Bend, kick the toes down to the floor as you extend. Squeeze the booty to drop the back leg. Pull that front leg towards you and across. And then you can take a big breath in, big breath out to try and sink a little bit deeper and really engaging through that booty and then exiting through inside leg hang. Let me know in the comments how these exercises helped, but please remember Rome wasn't built in a day and neither is your jade split. So stick with these exercises for the next few weeks and you should start to see some awesome progress in the way your jade split looks and feels. But I am releasing new videos weekly, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the content. And also give this video the thumbs up so I can keep bringing you more valuable content like this video. And if you do have any future requests, just leave them in the comments below.